Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday. So I did a little bit of musical printers here, I guess. Uh, I moved the Bamboo Lab P1S that I recently picked up to the spot where my Prusa Mark III S was, and I moved the Mark III S to where my ANET A8 was, and the ANET A8 is now, I guess, out to pasture. Let me know down in the comments if you guys have any ideas for what I could use that machine for. I, I hate to get rid of it. It's kind of attached to it. It's the first machine I built, heavily modified, but at the same time, I know it doesn't have any real value. I'd probably struggle to get 50 bucks for it on Facebook Marketplace. So if you have any ideas, let me know down in the comments. Uh, so I moved this printer here and I'd like to get the AMS unit on top of it. I didn't buy this one with an AMS unit, but I have an AMS unit on my X1C and I really don't need it on this machine. In fact, when I bought this as a combo, I didn't realize that you shouldn't even run the carbon fiber filament through the AMS unit. Yeah, Bamboo Lab says you can at least their stuff, but it's really abrasive and it wears everything out in that AMS unit really fast. Uh, the PTFE tubes, all the feed rollers, all that stuff. So I wanna get it off of there and run just single filament rolls on this machine. It'll stay by the ventilation so I can do uh, ABS, ASA, uh, polycarbonate, uh, all that fun stuff, and still have ventilation over here, and I'd like to get the AMS unit over to the P1S. Problem is, I don't have room for it. If I put it on top, I can't open the door because it hits the shelf here. I don't really want to get rid of the shelf because that's all my filament storage. So what I'm thinking is, let's put it next to it. The challenge is, I don't have a ton of space here. If I shift everything over 15 inches to accommodate the AMS unit, uh, it cuts the space on my workbench here in like half. Uh, what I'm thinking I want to do is build something for the AMS unit to sit up on top of because I can move these tools. In fact, this aluminum sheet back here behind the printer dates back to when I first got the ANET A8 and they were burning everybody's houses down. So, uh, of course, I installed MOSFETs on that, but I still felt a lot safer leaving that machine unattended with aluminum sheet underneath of it and behind it. So here's what I want to do. I want to get, move this aluminum sheet and get rid of that move the tools probably on the pegboard up over top of the printer and make something for the AMS to sit on top of this stuff up here so that I can still have the power supply and this other junk underneath of it. Uh, there's a pretty cool design out there that I did take a look at first uh, that actually keys into the side of the AMS unit uh, and raises it up. It's intended that you can put another AMS unit underneath of it. I considered doing that, but there's a couple things I don't like about that design. Number one, it makes the whole thing wider because it comes out at like an angle uh, from underneath the AMS so that you can put another AMS unit underneath of it. I don't need to do that. I, 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 the, the narrower this thing is, the better. I only want to go as wide as I have to to support the AMS. Secondly, as cool as that design is, I do wonder if over time, if you have four full rolls of filament in that AMS, if that guy doesn't start to sag a little bit in the middle because you're only supporting from the side frame of the AMS because there are four feet underneath this AMS unit. That's what's meant to support the weight of the AMS unit. It's probably fine, I'm probably overthinking it, but between that and the fact that I wanna go as narrow as I can, I think I'd just as soon make something for this guy to sit on. So here's my thought. Let's design some legs that would attach to just a piece of slab wood uh, that would work not only for this, but would work for all sorts of other things. It could be used as a monitor stand, could be used as a stand for you know electronics bench, could be used for anywhere where you would need a short stand for something. All right, sticking through my storage, I found this. I made this years ago just to set a monitor on top of, and then you could slip your keyboard underneath just to save desk space. I think we can reuse this piece of wood. This is a nice three-quarter solid wood. Let's go to work and see if we can design some legs that we can attach to this. All right, and here is the design that I came up with for this. So I started with just the board, since that's a given, and we know how large we need to cut the board. It's basically the same footprint as the AMS itself. And then from there, uh, the next thing that was most important to me was maximizing the space underneath of this and maximizing the space in front of, to the sides, and behind. So the legs themselves only come out about three millimeters in each direction past. 
that not only allows it to protect that corner of the wood, uh, but also gives us some rigidity since these guys are not going to be able to, to flex outward uh, due to sort of this L that we're wrapping around the wood. Uh, the next thing is I didn't want to see the fasteners if I didn't have to. I mean, it would have been really easy to just poke some holes here in the side and just have the fasteners go in from the side. Instead, I opted to add this angle section down here, both not only for support, just gives this, uh, instead of having a, a, a hard edge here, which would be a stress point on this, not only does this strengthen the leg itself, but it also allows us to go into the wood at an angle from the bottom. And here, if I, let's see, let's explode one of these, turn on our hidden geometry. And if I whack one of the sides, you can see our screw is gonna come in and this is just a standard one inch all purpose, like a drywall screw. This will come in from here and then go up at an angle into the wood. Uh, the one challenge that does pose is I don't want this leg to sort of migrate outwards as I'm trying to put that screw in. So I'm going to need to pre-drill those holes. And I want to pre-drill them a little bit uh, further from this face than what we actually need. That should have the effect of pulling this leg very tightly into the side of the board. So to enable us to do that, See, let me unhide these. Uh, I made a piece here. This is a drill guide, and this will go up right against the side of the board, and I'll pre-drill through these holes. Notice we don't have the countersink on the end because these aren't for screws. This is just a drill in, and I took this bore and I pulled it in this direction, so closer to, to this edge by one millimeter, which should pull these legs nice and snug tight when we put the screws in. Uh, this piece here will be printed in TPU. That's a leveling pad. If we look at the bottom of each one of these legs, uh, there's two recesses in here for uh, to insert those TPU pieces in whatever length we need to get this guy to sit level if we have a surface that's just not completely flat. Uh, I did this in this case for two reasons. Number one, I figured just it would be nice to be able to level this guy in whatever application I use these legs for. Uh, but also where I'm going to set this, one side of the legs is going to sit on the, the rubber mat on my workbench on the electronic side and one side is going to sit on that aluminum plate. They're not the same height. I think there's about a two millimeter difference between those surfaces. So I'm going to need a way uh, to get this guy to still sit level on the desk. The last component of the design is, uh, you know, I broke the edges. I tried to just give it a nice appearance. I added some, you know, sort of uh, random uh, rectangular geometry here as cuts in the side. I kind of thought that just gave it a neat look. I guess we'll see when it prints. Uh, this will be the face uh, out here that prints down on the print bed. So this will have that textured look from the print bed, which I think will look pretty cool. But uh, let's, uh, let's start printing and find out. All right, this came out great. I love the texture out here on what is going to be the outside face. I think the sort of random rectangle shapes are going to give this a neat look. Let's grab the wood. All right, so this is too big. Uh, I want to use the clearest piece of wood, but I mean by clearest is a section here that doesn't have any knots in it. I think that's this what used to be the bottom of this. And we don't need it to be this wide. We only need 14 and a half inches. That's what I measured the AMS to be. So I guess the first step is let's knock this guy apart. All right, I think this is gonna be our best piece to work with. I've got all the nails out of it. Let's go cut this down to 14 and a half in this face.
All right, I just lightly broke all the edges on the wood as well on the sander quick. So let's mock this up and see what this guy's gonna look like. All right, I'm really happy with that. That's exactly the look I was going for. Let's get, uh, let's get the holes drilled for this and get these legs installed. All right, so I've got a drill guide. I should probably get myself a set of like stop collars for drill bits, but if I choke up on the drill bit and I try this guy in the drill guide, uh, the bit does stop short of going through the top of the wood. So I'll just try and kind of stop before I get to there for each one of these. And even if I go all the way to the end of the, uh, the chuck here, I shouldn't actually go through the top of the face of the wood. And this is where I realized that in the depth of my ignorance, it didn't occur to me that I'm only going to be able to drill uh, two sets of the holes with this drill guide. We need a mirror image of this drill guide, just like we needed a mirror image of the legs uh, for the other two corners. So let me go start that print. All right, guys, I cheated and I printed this in the Bamboo Basic PLA, the sample I got with the machine. And the bamboo printers run faster with their own filament. I think it's a custom blend that just flows faster. I think the actual print time laying down the plastic on the bed was like 14 minutes for this. It's insane. I almost felt like I should have stood back from the machine while it was running. All right, I'm going to be using one inch screws for these, and this is just a plain old all purpose screw. This is the best ratcheting screwdriver I've ever used. I'll link this guy down in the description. It's got bit storage too. All right, let's go see how it fits. And if you're wondering why there's only feet on this side and why in fact this piece doesn't even have holes, this is the first one I printed. This is before I revised it, add these holes for the TPU feet so that we could adjust the height if this is sitting on an uneven surface. But it's not gonna need it on this side. This rubber mat here is taller than the aluminum plate over here. So I just needed these to raise uh, this end up by, I think two millimeters uh, so that it sits level. All right guys, it was too hard to film while I was moving everything around. There's just not enough room down here, but I am really, really happy with how this came out. I think the legs on this look great. I'm really happy with the look of the wood as well. I know some people were probably questioning the choice of having a wood shelf here as part of the setup, but I actually think it contrasts really nicely against the, uh, the dark gray uh, and the black. So the STLs for this will be available on my site, fpfdesigns.com. Uh, just like everything we do on this video, I always give all the STLs away for free, and I will link that down in the description of this video. You could make your own the same height and the same size uh, for your own AMS if you wanted to lift it up next to your printer, uh, or you could use the same design for the legs in any size piece of wood, really, for a monitor stand or a stand on your bench just to lift some stuff up. So guys, as always, thanks for hanging out with me in the shop for this week's video. Even if you can't use the design on these legs for anything, hopefully it inspired you to go out and print something functional uh, for yourself. If this is your first time on the channel, I do a new video like this every single Friday. It's always a functional print. We don't do benchies or any just multicolored stuff just for the heck of it. Uh, if you're into that sort of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.